前から結構ノスタルジックなテーマだったので、そういう意味ではもうあんまり。The game concept has been floating around in my head for about 10 years, but it was already based around the nostalgia theme. So that original idea didn't change. Originally, I was thinking of creating an adventure of a boy, with the theme being of friendship and the sort of strong bonds that a family has. And the original theme has not changed. Actually, over the past 10 years, I myself have been growing and experiencing this theme with my family and friends. So the fact that this game is 10 years in the making has helped me personally experience the theme for myself. Could you tell us about Eddie? Like, what kind of guy is he? And he seems kind of like a high class. Guy versus Pad, who's a little bit more of a low class rogue, and you know, their interaction, they, they're friends, but they're also kind of rivals. Could you kind of explain their, their relationship? We decided to make an interesting dynamic between the two characters. So I wanted to make a slight difference between their classes, but that doesn't mean to say that Pad came from some horrible place. But I still wanted there to be some difference between him and Eddie. Eddie is surrounded by people that are not living too happily, but Eddie still manages to be very bright and cheerful. I wanted Eddie to be around different types of characters with different personalities so that he can develop unique and special relationships with each and every one of them. Melody is a very different character. Like, I, when I first saw her, I thought she'd be very cute, but she's kind of like bossy and. Rude, but she's fun. But yeah, she wasn't what I expected. In real life, if a girl is this much of a pain, then there are times it pisses me off. But in a game, a girl being like this, and being a little bossy, and being strong, like pulling you around, might be fun, or at least entertaining. So that's why I made Melody like that. Another important theme is exploration, and you go to all these cities, and there are cities in our real world, but they're kind of different. So, what was your approach to choosing the cities for the game, and did you try to make it realistic, or did you want to make it more fanciful? About the cities in the game, there were a few that we had in mind before we started developing the game, and there are some that we added as we worked, but the main idea was to really try and encapsulate the entire culture of the world. We wanted to have every culture represented in the game. So we have Europe, Asia, America, South America, South Africa, and others that we tried to take and show the culture in those regions. So we basically took as many regions as we could and then considered all the variations between them and then focused on highlighting those variations in each region to create a fully fleshed out world. Another important theme in nostalgia is the airship. I mean, lots of RPGs have airships, but in this game, the Maverick is almost like a character. I mean, you're in it all the time, you're buying new stuff for it. Why did you decide to make the Maverick so important to the game? When you go out on an adventure to explore the world, one can use a lot of different modes of travel, like boats, trains, airplanes, and the like. So in the game, I chose a flying ship. Not only because it's completely unconventional as a mode of travel, but it has also completely unconventional abilities. Unlike other modes of transportation, it can take the player to worlds that are unreachable to them. The players could get close, but only the ship can get them all the way there. Nostalgia offers two different battle systems, one for the party and one for the airship. 
I find the airship battles to be a little harder than the party battles. Was that on purpose? I wanted the party battle systems to be very easy and approachable to players, so we made it fairly forgiving from the start. The party fighting in the game is based around attacks and skills, which are part of the order table system in the game. And this system was designed with a broad audience in mind, and was created to make the game easily approachable. And as far as the airship goes, we based its combat system around the fact that it's an airship, and that it has unique properties that make it different than when fighting on the ground. But if the player pays close enough attention to the battle system on the airship, they can pick it up fairly easily. We just felt that the airship needed to have more of a personalized fighting system, since fighting in the air is so much different than fighting on the ground. Another element of the game, uh, the Adventurers Association, it, it, it's surprising because most RPGs are very linear, and because of this you can take these quests on at any time and they're optional. Um, so is that a big focus of the game to, to make it not be so linear with this Adventurers Association? So if you make a game just following one story, it's just going to become one simple narrow game story. But since this is based on the whole world, we want it to be more global, more free. So yes, we did this on purpose, to make it more broad. When you're playing a normal RPG game, after you finish one area, you usually won't go back to that area. But we wanted to create a game that makes you want to go back to where you have already cleared. Also, we incentivize the player by slowly revealing the world map as they explore and find new places. I can't get into specifics, but there may or may not be a special prize at the end of the game if you completely fill out the whole world map. There are not that many games that you suggest all of your friends play, but this is definitely one of those games. You could give a copy to your parents, and after they are done with it, they could just as easily hand it down to their neighbor's kids, and they would enjoy it just as much as they did. This is truly a game for everyone. <laughs> 